We'll show you some of the Army's newest weapons. Stick around. The Department of Defense is constantly working to improve the equipment it supplies to troops. No doubt the evolution of gear has come a long way, even in the past decade or so. But someone has to develop and test the latest and greatest before it makes it into the hands of troops. Thanks to Program Executive Office Soldier and the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate, two groups responsible for these developments, we were able to get an up-close look at some of the newest and future military weapons. Proving ground in Maryland for a day of weapons demonstrations, we were there faster than rounds flying down range. Not only did I get to see the newest weapons the Army has developed, I got to try them out. Some, like this one, the M107 sniper rifle, are already in the hands of soldiers. Other weapons, like the XM320 grenade launcher, five meter burst radius, you would have got them both, are in the final stages of testing and development and won't be fielded for another year or so. All are designed with the needs, comfort, and versatility soldiers demand. This is the common remotely operated weapon station or crows. Basically it's like any video game you have a joystick, you have a monitor, uh, it's as simple as squeezing the joystick, moving it around to where you want and when you're ready to go you pull the trigger. This is the M110 semi-automatic sniper system. It was developed because snipers are saying they have to engage more targets more quickly than before. Nice shot. It's in the mass. It feels just like an M16. There's really no kick to it at all. This is a 12-gauge modular accessory shotgun. It can be used as a standalone weapon or attached like this to the bottom of an M4, eliminating the need to carry around two separate weapons. This M249 squad automatic weapon or saw is a little bit different than its predecessor. You've got a collapsible buttstock so you can adjust it to your size and also the benefit of this is it helps for room clearing getting in and out of tight situations. That's why also if you notice up at the barrel that's also shorter. A two and a half hour drive down Interstate 95 from Aberdeen is Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. There, the Pentagon Channel Staff Sergeant Raina Barnett met up with the DOD's Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate. They were showing off one of their latest products, the Active Denial System. It's basically a radio transmitter that produces a, a beam of energy that goes down range at 95 gigahertz, which is getting a little bit technical, but that is a frequency that when it hits the human skin is only absorbed 1 64th of an inch. Now, the, when it's absorbed into the skin, what it does is it creates a heating effect. So as that heat builds on the human, it's, it, it doesn't create any damage, but what it does is it causes people to move out of the way. Feels like you are literally sticking your body into a 425 degree oven. Operator target control target is the center target in the box, center target in the box. You are clear to engage. We've just been engaged with the active denial system. Uh, as you can see from 800 meters away, it can actually target one person within, within a crowd without really affecting the other people. Officials say the ADS could be fielded by early 2008. That's our show this week. A special thanks to PEO Soldier and the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate for allowing us to try out their latest developments. And thanks to the reporters and producers in the field for their contribution. Please be sure to tune in and join us next week as we bring you a recap of the week's news stories about individuals and issues surrounding the Department of Defense. For This Week in the Pentagon, I'm Sergeant Brian Buckwalter. 